Okay, uh, uh, so first of all, I want to thank organizers for inviting me uh, to this uh, meeting and give me opportunity to uh, share the uh, uh, nice feelings about this uh, uh, new Quest Center. And uh, since uh, it is, since the word uh, entanglement uh, is uh, uh, even in the uh, name of this uh, center, I decided uh, to uh, speak a little bit about uh, entanglement uh, in uh, large uh, quantum systems. Uh, it's not that I like this word very much. It's uh, great for uh, uh, the name uh, of the uh, title of the uh, paper and the name of the institute, uh, but when you start thinking about whether it is uh, objective reality or it's uh, uh, just uh, our way of thinking and uh, is there is uh, uh, some good definition how to uh, measure uh, the entanglement, uh, there are some difficulties here, at least for me. Uh, so the uh, first uh, definition that uh, uh, you hear is that uh, if uh, uh, you have, uh, let's say, two spins, uh, there are states which are, uh, which, uh, uh, are the uh, direct product of certain state of one spin and certain state of uh, another spin. These uh, states are uh, not entangled and uh, uh, if uh, you cannot present uh, your state in this form, uh, then uh, it is uh, entangled. And when you start uh, uh, thinking about uh, systems that are uh, pretty uh, uh, important now, uh, uh, namely uh, systems uh, where uh, many uh, spins participate uh, and uh, you have to uh, understand uh, what is entangled and what is not entangled state, then uh, the question of uh, uh, how to measure uh, this uh, becomes uh, even more important. So uh, let's, uh, uh, there are uh, different ways of uh, discussing the issue of uh, many body uh, localization and, uh, uh, and uh, possible uh, quantum states from the point of view of uh, uh, theory of localization. Uh, and uh, uh, let me start with these uh, uh, multi-spin uh, systems, uh, which uh, uh, people uh, uh, in computer science uh, now uh, made us to change the name for uh, qubits. <laughs> uh, so there is no big difference, and you can, for the same token, uh, discuss a uh, uh, system of qubits which uh, eventually uh, should evolve into a quantum computer or uh, some kind of spin model uh, with uh, uh, interacting uh, spins. And uh, if you have uh, n spins, uh, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, sigma z uh, can uh, be up or down, this is uh, I think spin, then there are uh, the states which uh, computer scientists call uh, bit streaks. Namely, uh, each uh, spin has a definite uh, z uh, projection, uh, which is either uh, up or down, or plus one and minus one, or whatever you want. And uh, there are uh, n of them. And uh, the uh, beauty and also the main difficulty is uh, that uh, number of uh, possible B strings uh, is uh, enormously large because even, for instance, uh, people will make uh, a system uh, of 100 uh, qubits, uh, then a uh, total number of uh, B strings is uh, 2 to the 100, which, is, which makes uh, uh, what we call astronomically big numbers uh, actually look pretty small. Uh, so uh, 
uh, this label i uh, will label the uh, different bit strings. And uh, now, uh, when you start thinking uh, about quantum states, you realize that each bit string uh, is uh, uh, some uh, possible uh, quantum states, and these states are uh, disentangled uh, because uh, they are obviously a product of a, a particular uh, state of each Isaac spin. And uh, you can uh, form, uh, you can use these quantum uh, states which correspond to particular bit string as a basis in your uh, Hilbert space. And uh, in computer science, uh, this is now called computational basis. Because uh, after uh, any uh, mm, manipulation with your quantum computer, which is uh, uh, called computation, uh, you end up uh, with certain quantum state, and uh, readout is basically projecting it to uh, uh, this basis and trying to understand uh, what is the contribution <coughs> of each uh, bit string. So uh, there are these uh, uh, states that uh, correspond to particular bit strings, and all other quantum states are their linear combinations, and uh, it means that they are in time. And what you can uh, do, you can take your uh, uh, just generic uh, quantum state of your uh, n uh, spin system and uh, expand it in terms of these states which uh, each correspond to particular uh, bit string, to particular uh, uh, set of Ising spins. And uh, coefficients here is nothing but uh, wave function uh, in the uh, space of this uh, bit string. And, uh, of course, it is, uh, uh, has the same uh, definition as a wave function has uh, in real space. And, of course, uh, probability to observe a particular bit string if you deal with a uh, state determined by this uh, wave function is uh, just uh, uh, absolute square of, the, uh, of this wave function. And now, uh, the uh, question uh, that uh, you can ask uh, is uh, uh, actually uh, how many uh, bit string states you uh, used to create this uh, particular quantum state of the whole system. Uh, so how many uh, these states are uh, entangled uh, into uh, this uh, particular quantum state? And uh, it looks uh, natural to think that if uh, there are few of them, entanglement is weak. If there are uh, very many of them, entanglement is uh, uh, very big. And uh, what I want to, uh, uh, want to discuss is uh, that you can uh, classify uh, this uh, uh, answers to this question uh, for a system which is large, so that total number of uh, this uh, total dimension of this Hilbert space um, tending to uh, infinity, you can uh, classify the answers into uh, three uh, groups. Uh, either you just use of order one, maybe one, maybe five, maybe, maybe uh, ten uh, different bit strings to form this quantum state, and then uh, I will call this uh, localized state. And uh, uh, if uh, you uh, used uh, uh, of order total number, let's say uh, each uh, second state is uh, participating, uh, I will call this uh, extended endergonic. And uh, it turns out uh, that uh, it is possible to have a third uh, situation which I find uh, most interesting, uh, where uh, this uh, number uh, is uh, uh, tends to infinity together with uh, the total number of uh, the uh, uh, bit string states, uh, but is still uh, measure zero uh, of uh, 
this number. So it is this number to the power which is something between uh, zero and one. And uh, this situation uh, I will call uh, uh, extended but non ergodic So uh, the only uh, question to uh, answer is how to formalize this uh, number of, uh, uh, of uh, states involved in this uh, particular uh, quantum state, how to formalize it uh, so that we can uh, calculate it. And uh, for this, uh, it's uh, uh, useful to introduce this notion of a support set of particular uh, quantum state, and it's determined in the following way. So it's basically the uh, smallest number of uh, uh, distinct states uh, that you need to uh, get normalization of this uh, wave function uh, with uh, particular accuracy. So if uh, suppose you need uh, to find a number of states which uh, sum uh, for which sum of psi square equals to uh, 0 0.109 uh, and uh, uh, epsilon being uh, uh, 10 to the five minus 10, uh, then uh, you can ask yourself how many states you need. And uh, it turns out uh, that uh, it's possible uh, that if you uh, make epsilon arbitrary small, but uh, n uh, independent, so you allow n to tend to uh, infinity uh, first, and after that do whatever you want with epsilon, uh, then uh, it's possible that number uh, of uh, these bit strings in this uh, support set uh, will, be, uh, uh, will be not uh, proportional to the n. So you understand that if I tend epsilon to zero first before n goes to infinity, then I need all of them. But uh, if uh, I uh, change order of the limit, I need only uh, something. And uh, if uh, uh, states are localized, this uh, support uh, set consists of, uh, of order one states. This uh, can be epsilon dependent, but uh, and independent. Uh, for uh, ergodic state, it is uh, uh, proportional to uh, n, so increases uh, as uh, first power of n. And as I told, for non-ergodic state, uh, ns can be uh, a power of n. So it is still exponentially big uh, as a uh, 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 in uh, the number of the uh, qubits, but it is uh, exponentially small as compared with total uh, number of the uh, 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 total dimension of the Hilbert space. And uh, it looks like uh, these states, which are non ergodic uh, are of a great interest uh, in. Uh, for uh, quantum computation as well as uh, other things. So, uh, to... Okay. So, the reason you introduce this epsilon is to get rid of many many states that have very, very, very simple interpolation. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so, uh, when n tends uh, to infinity, there are more and more states where uh, wave function is enormously small, but not zero. But if you uh, put epsilon exactly to zero, you have to take them with you. And uh, uh, this is not uh, physical to worry about this. OK, so uh, now let me give you uh, an example of uh, how we uh, can get uh, the states to uh, speak about. So let me uh, introduce uh, the uh, Hamiltonian, uh, which consists of two terms. This H0 is uh, basically a generalized uh, Ising model. So you have uh, spins, and there are n 
uh, small n of them. And each of them is in some uh, parallel field. And also, uh, they uh, have pairwise interactions, but uh, it's not that they are uh, ordered in one dimensional or two dimensional space. Uh, instead, uh, it can be uh, Ising model on a graph, it can be each spin interacting with each spin, but with some uh, uh, random uh, 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 exchange uh, uh, coupling constant. Uh, it can be anything. Uh, any uh, model uh, which you uh, can imagine. And uh, in addition to that, I will add a parallel field, which is uh, uniform and uh, uh, perpendicular field, sorry, uh, and directed, let's say, in that direction. And uh, it turns out that uh, this uh, Hamiltonian is actually universal uh, Hamiltonian for uh, quantum computer. So uh, there is, I think, a theorem that you can reduce any uh, quantum computation in, uh, uh, in uh, adiabatic changing of uh, uh, perpendicular field for uh, one of these Hamiltonians. Now, uh, first observation that we can make uh, is that if we forget about perpendicular field, uh, then all these uh, sigma z's commute with the Hamiltonian, uh, obviously, and that's why they are conserved. So uh, if you create any uh, bit string uh, without perpendicular field, it will, uh, uh, it will not change under uh, uh, the governing of this uh, Hamiltonian. Uh, and uh, that's why uh, these strings are eigenfunctions of this uh, generalized Ising model. And uh, at the same time, as soon as you turn on uh, the uh, perpendicular field, uh, what you have, you have uh, terms uh, which don't commute with the Ising spin. And uh, it means uh, that you start to uh, create uh, 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 state which uh, you start to create hybridization bet between uh, different bit strings which is uh, creating uh, entanglement. Now, uh, it is uh, uh, maybe tutorial uh, to uh, speak uh, about the same problem in a kind of uh, different uh, language. So, uh, each, uh, uh, each Ising spin can be either, let's say, uh, one or minus one. And uh, it means that bit string, which is mu this, uh, of these uh, Ising spins, uh, it's uh, determined aside uh, on uh, some uh, n-dimensional uh, hypercube. And, uh, so we have uh, this uh, uh, n-dimensional hypercube, so number of dimensions uh, turn to uh, infinity, but still it, this is some, uh, some space. And uh, H0 plays a role of the on-site energy. So uh, for each uh, bit string, for each side of this hypercube, uh, we have certain uh, particular on-site energy. And uh, since, uh, as we all know, that uh, sigma x, which appears in this uh, part of perpendicular field, is uh, sum of sigma up and sigma plus and sigma minus, it means that applying this uh, operator to particular bit string uh, uh, actually uh, causes the hopping between uh, one side and one of uh, its neighbors, and neighbor means that two bit strings uh, differ by uh, only uh, one uh, particular spin. So uh, what we get as a result, we get uh, this Anderson model, uh, which uh, is used uh, uh, in the 
theory of localization, and basically it is a tight binding model uh, uh, with on-site uh, disorder. Uh, and uh, we get uh, this uh, Anderson model, but uh, it lives not in a uh, familiar uh, d-dimensional uh, uh, lattice, uh, but rather on uh, this uh, hypercube, uh, which is uh, uh, which has number of dimensions uh, tending to infinity, uh, and uh, nevertheless, it is still a problem of one particle localization. So once more, the whole system uh, of uh, n much bigger than one spins uh, can be thought of as just one quantum particle, but uh, on the on this n-dimensional uh, hypercube. So. It, of course, means uh, uh, that w when I uh, speak about Anderson model, uh, I have, again, uh, two terms of the Hamiltonian. One uh, is uh, diagonal, and I uh, corresponds uh, to particular site, and this state uh, is on-site state. Uh, so uh, this uh, term uh, is diagonal in the basis of on-site states, and uh, this uh, uh, second term causes the hopping between sites that are uh, nearest neighbors. And uh, what we have here, uh, we have this model on the uh, n-dimensional hypercube. Uh, and uh, instead of uh, having a uh, uh, number of dimensions uh, which is uh, constant, d tends to the constant, uh, and uh, uh, linear size uh, L goes to infinity, uh, we have infinite uh, in the limit and to infinity number of dimensions, and linear size is just one, uh, but uh, it's still a huge system. I just uh, always show these uh, pictures which I stole in the, uh, uh, in the internet, and uh, it shows projection of six and nine dimensional uh, hypercube to uh, this two dimensional uh, plane. And uh, you can uh, only imagine uh, what will be if we're dealing with thousand dimensional uh, hypercube, uh, which is needed uh, to describe uh, states uh, of the, uh, uh, of the uh, thousand qubits, which is needed to solve uh, a particular problem. Okay. Now, uh, if you uh, go back uh, to uh, problems that appear in condensed matter physics, uh, then uh, it turns out uh, that uh, we have uh, the same uh, generic situation. Uh, so if we, for, for example, uh, want uh, to speak in the same language uh, about interacting uh, quantum particles, bosons of fermions does matter, uh, and uh, we have uh, n uh, one-particle states with certain uh, one-particle uh, energies. It can be, for instance, states localized in real space or localized in momentum space. And uh, each uh, state uh, uh, is uh, somehow occupied, and uh, n mu will be occupation number of a state number. And then uh, if uh, we have many particles but you don't have uh, interaction, uh, then occupation numbers are integrals of motion. In the same way as uh, for a uh, qubit problem, uh, the uh, projections uh, of spins to the z-axis uh, was uh, uh, integrals of motion. Here we have occupation numbers are uh, integrals of motion, no interaction, no change of the occupation numbers. And uh, if uh, we introduce the state of, again, state of whole system, uh, which is a uh, disentangled state of, uh, uh, which is characterized by set of the occupation numbers, then without interaction we have this diagonal Hamiltonian, and uh, the energy is, uh, of course, sum of all uh, one-particle energies. 
and uh, as soon uh, as we uh, as we start to uh, turn on the interaction, we start to uh, mix uh, different states of uh, given occupation numbers. In old language, it means uh, we have scattering uh, of our particles which changes the occupation numbers, and uh, adding uh, this term uh, to the uh, Hamiltonian, we get again something uh, which uh, it looks like Anderson model, but again uh, in the space where each side uh, uh, is characterized by a total set of occupation numbers. Uh, maybe uh, at this point uh, would be any questions? Or oh, everybody is already done. Uh, how much time do I have? Ten minutes. Oh, okay. So uh, I just want to uh, remind uh, what uh, we have for, uh, uh, for conventional uh, Anderson model. Uh, we have uh, lattice, we have uh, on-site energies that are random and uh, somehow distributed, for instance, uniformly. Uh, and uh, there is uh, uh, hopping uh, between uh, the nearest neighbors. And uh, then if uh, this is finite dimensional lattice, we have Anderson transition, uh, which means that when uh, this uh, measure of disorder, this parameter W, is larger than certain critical value, uh, we have all states localized. If it is smaller, uh, we have uh, uh, states uh, that are uh, extended. And uh, the uh, way to understand it uh, is based on the notion of resonances. And uh, resonance between uh, two, uh, two quantum states uh, is a, a situation where difference between the energies of these uh, states and the uh, of diagonal matrix element between them uh, is uh, such uh, that uh, this matrix element uh, exceeds the difference uh, of the uh, diagonal matrix elements. And in this case, uh, we have, if you want, entanglement of this one particle state, uh, which means that our uh, uh, particle is neither in this well nor in this well, but there is uh, equal opportunity or almost equal opportunity to find it uh, in each of the wells, if it is in bonding or uh, anti-bonding state. So uh, uh, we have uh, this notion of resonances, and transition is basically, uh, if you want uh, this uh, poor man's understanding of localization, uh, the transition is uh, such that if uh, you are in the insulator, the resonances are uh, uh, pretty uh, uh, rare uh, events because uh, dispersion of the on-site energies is very big and matrix element is very small. Uh, and uh, these uh, uh, resonances are far from each other and that's why uh, each uh, wave function is pretty well uh, described by uh, on-site wave function with some small correction. But uh, as you start reducing the disorder, uh, then you get more and more resonances and at certain uh, disorder, which is critical disorder, you get percolation over these resonances and uh, you get uh, a wave function uh, which uh, is uh, non-zero in many uh, sides. So this is how you get this entanglement uh, over a large number of sides. Okay. Uh, so now, uh, what is uh, the uh, difference between a uh, problem of localization uh, in uh, d-dimensional space and, let's say, a uh, spin system or spin system of qubits or a uh, system of interacting quantum particles? Uh, the difference is, the main difference to my mind, is that if you take a conventional situation, then uh, uh, the number of uh, sites uh, at a distance r from a given site on the lattice, uh, it's, uh, what happened? 
uh, is uh, uh, increasing with r as some power. And uh, in contrast, uh, in these many body problems, it increases exponentially with distance. For example, uh, uh, for uh, bit strings, you can uh, get uh, this notion of humming distance uh, number of uh, uh, spins which are different into uh, bit strings, and uh, number of uh, bit strings at a particular humming distance increases with L uh, exponential. And as I told this, uh, is the main uh, qualitative difference because uh, it suggests uh, that in contrast with conventional state when uh, the most probable resonance uh, appears uh, at one of the neighbors, uh, here uh, we start to have resonances which appear at uh, large distances uh, from uh, one uh, to maximal uh, and uh, you start to get wave function, uh, which is, uh, uh, can have many uh, different peaks and still not be your body. So we have uh, this uh, uh, generic situation when uh, the number uh, of uh, states increases exponentially with uh, the distance. And, uh, this is kind of uh, another class of the uh, localization problem. And uh, the uh, difference, uh, I'm, since not too much time, I'm, uh, I will first uh, give you the answer. The main difference is that uh, while uh, for a conventional Anderson problem, there is uh, just one transition. Uh, between localized and uh, ergodic uh, extended states. And uh, these uh, non-ergodic uh, states appear on only at uh, the critical point, uh, at uh, uh, critical value of the disorder, and as soon as you uh, reduce uh, disorder a little bit more, you only get uh, ergodic state. And uh, as we understand now, uh, for uh, these uh, problems where number of sites increase exponentially, you actually split this transition into two. So you have now uh, three typical, uh, uh, three uh, different phases. Uh, one phase is localized. Uh, there is uh, uh, another phase which is uh, extended and ergodic, and uh, in between there is a third phase which is extended and uh, not ergodic. And uh, this is just, I'm repeating uh, the statement, uh, so for uh, usual uh, Anderson model, uh, uh, if uh, uh, disorder is not uh, exactly equal to critical, uh, you have either uh, localized or ergodic states, and uh, there is critical behavior which is uh, pretty well uh, studied. Uh, and uh, uh, this takes place only uh, in the uh, critical region. Uh, and at the same time, uh, uh, we can uh, discuss uh, following what people uh, know about these non-ergodic states in the uh, uh, critical regime, uh, we can uh, introduce the same uh, parameters to uh, quantify them. Namely, uh, it is what is known as uh, moments of inverse participation ratio. So you take your wave function, you put it into power, uh, put its uh, absolute value into power to Q, and uh, study how this sum uh, uh, evolves with n, uh, when n tends to infinity. And uh, what you have, uh, of course, you have normalization, so i1 uh, is equal to 1. And, uh, uh, and uh, if, uh, uh, if states 
are, uh, uh, are localized, uh, then uh, this, uh, I, uh, so, sorry, uh, and uh, just the definition is uh, that these moments of inverse participation ratio, uh, they change with n as some power of n, uh, and there is a set of these uh, 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 critical exponents which I call tau q. So you understand that uh, the more sparse is wave function, the stronger are the uh, fluctuations, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, smaller uh, is, uh, are these moments of inverse participation ratio. So in ergodic state, uh, when all psi square are more or less of the same uh, order of magnitude, which means that they are of the order of one over n, uh, this tau q equals to uh, Q minus one, uh, and uh, okay, this is uh, not enough time for that. And for uh, localized states, all tau Qs are uh, equal to zero. Uh, again, just you can see it from the definition. And uh, in general, you can uh, introduce this uh, uh, fractal dimensions, which is ratio between actual value of tau Q and uh, uh, and Q minus one. So uh, in uh, these non-ergodic states, these fractal dimensions okay, are different uh, and uh, they are different from zero at one and uh, depend uh, on Q. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, skip all these technical uh, details uh, and uh, uh, and uh, discuss what actually uh, is interesting to study. Uh, namely, uh, if you want some uh, uh, system where uh, the uh, number of uh, sites increases exponentially, uh, then uh, the first uh, object that comes to mind is so-called KLE3, uh, where uh, each uh, site in a given generation has a certain number of neighbors in the next generation, and of course, uh, this uh, number of sites uh, increases exponentially, but uh, this is not a good object to, to study, and what we were uh, studying for the last couple of years is so-called uh, random regular graph, uh, which is uh, kind of, turns out to be kind of a sample model for all these uh, many body uh, uh, systems, and uh, this is just a particular uh, regular graph, is just graph when you have n sites and each of them uh, uh, has particular number of connections with uh, other sites. And, uh, uh, and uh, uh, here, uh, if you uh, are at least at small enough distance from a particular site, you also have exponential uh, increase of the uh, number of sites. Okay, uh, now uh, just to uh, uh, show you uh, how uh, these anomalous dimensions uh, change uh, as a function of disorder uh, for this system of uh, random regular graphs, uh, and uh, uh, this is result of the exact diagonalization of systems up to the uh, uh, number of sites uh, of uh, a little bit bigger than uh, 10 to the 5. Uh, and uh, you can see that indeed uh, what is uh, we call uh, D2 uh, is changing from 0 uh, to uh, something uh, close to 1 when you reduce this order. And the uh, uh, unexpected and interesting uh, feature is that there is a kind of clear jump at W for the 10 uh, uh, for this k equal 3. Uh, it doesn't matter what particular, but uh, the uh, behavior is clearly discontinuous. This is how uh, D2 depends on, uh, on logarithm n. And uh, this basically is, this existence of this jump basically makes it impossible 
uh, to tell that it is only finite size effect. And uh, this is a phase diagram uh, of uh, uh, states as a function of uh, energy and disorder. And uh, you can see that this green uh, region, which corresponds to non-ergodic states, gets uh, bigger and bigger and kind of uh, 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 dominates the phase diagram for large k. Uh, so I don't have time uh, to, uh, uh, to present here uh, the uh, uh, analytical calculation and uh, some uh, very efficient uh, approximate method uh, called population dynamics and analytics is based on so-called uh, replica symmetry breaking. Uh, but it turns out uh, that uh, we know uh, this uh, behavior of the uh, anomalous uh, dimensions as a function of disorder pretty well. And uh, for example, uh, uh, this is how well uh, just analytical formula uh, works. Uh, you can uh, see how it fits the known uh, numerical result. Uh, and uh, this is basically my uh, last picture. Uh, so you have dependence of uh, anomalous dimension uh, as a function of disorder uh, calculated uh, from analytics, uh, from uh, this uh, population dynamics, and from exact diagonalization. And you see that uh, the, uh, they are all in a pretty good agreement. So, uh, what uh, I think uh, there is no doubt in is that this non-ergodic phase exists. It's very interesting because uh, we don't realize, but uh, in order to apply uh, conventional statistical mechanics, uh, we need to assume that our states are actually maximally entangled. And uh, if we have this non-ergodic situation, uh, it means uh, that uh, you have very, to be very cautious uh, with uh, uh, your uh, usual thermodynamical approaches. It, this is from the point of view of uh, condensed matter theory. And uh, as I told, uh, these uh, states are uh, actually unusual and very interesting from the uh, com computational uh, point of view. So uh, what I know is that they exist, but there is a lot of work to do in order to clarify their properties and kind of learn more about them. Thank you very much. <laughs>